Okay, so we've built the first version of our application, but we need to receive some input from the user. And to do that, we can use the read line function that's built into Kotlin.io. This is built into the platform. And this will allow us to read some input from the user on the command line. And then what we can do is say print line, and we'll say you entered the value that you entered using string interpolation. And if we go ahead and run this now, in the output window down below, what you're going to see down here is that Please enter your arithmetic problem. Let's see, one plus two. And then we'll see over here that you entered one plus two. And then of course the application exited at that point in time. So this works great. We can now get some values from the user, but just like a regular calculator, a calculator is not going to stop after you enter one problem. So we need to enter multiple problems. And this is a perfect opportunity to use a while loop. So what we can say is while while is not null, then we can go ahead and grab some values. And so what we'll say here is we need to get the input again. And then let's go ahead and print this here. So we did val, we need to make this a var now because we're gonna be re we're gonna be resetting it every time. And let's go ahead and print line what we said. No, you entered input. Now we're going to run into a problem here because we haven't told a way for the the while line to exit. And if we know anything about the read line, what read line says is it will return a read or null if the input stream is redirected to the file. We're not redirecting to a file, so we're not going to get null back. So if I press enter, we're probably gonna get a line feed inside of here. So what we need to do is have a way to short circuit out of the while loop, otherwise this chunk of code will just continually run on forever. There's no way for us to get out of it. So if we were to run this now, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Let's run it. And let's enter a problem, one plus two, okay, two plus three, five divided by 10. And if I enter, we just, we can't get out of this, we're stuck. So we need a way to, to short circuit out. So I'm gonna stop the program. So we do need to actually figure out a way to get out of this. So what we can do is we can check to see if the input is null. So if the input does not equal null, that's what we're doing, but let's also check to see if it's empty. So, and the input, is not blank. So if we go look at the implementation of that, it returns true if it's not empty and contains some characters except the white space characters. So we wanna make sure it's not blank, it just contains something. So if that's the case, then we'll this this piece of code will just continue executing. And this will be our, the main, in a moment, this will be the main section of our calculator app. So let's go ahead and run this again to see what this looks like. And once we run this, we'll see, okay, one plus two, there we go. We got two plus three, we got five divided by 10. So we can keep entering things over and over. However, now if I press enter, what we're gonna see is that the process finished right there. So it exited out of the application because what it made it exit out is basically, it is blank. So therefore it only continues if it's not blank. And therefore the application said, well, it's blank. And at that point that it exited. So now you could do a couple of things here. Uh, so if you wanted to say goodbye, you could pretty much do that right here. You could say print ln goodbye. And then you would know that the program exited. So we could do this very easily. You just hit run here. And now we can enter the arithmetic problems. One plus two, three, 33 plus two, and then enter. And it's like, goodbye, and then it exits. So we know that the actual program is exiting. Of course, we do know that already from here, but when we compile it later, it would be nice to have some user feedback to say, hey, we're done with the program. So now we can actually create our calculator inside of this piece here, because we can now process many different problems one after another. Each time we're gonna get some new input via this read line method, which then will change, and then we can process it, which we'll end up doing right in here.